Hello guys and welcome to the last studio vlog of the year. So this vlog is going to be a lot longer than what I anticipated because I realized that I have a bunch of clips stored in my SD card about different unboxings and things that I've, I've meant to show you but I just never did because my videos would be too long. I don't know if you prefer longer vlogs or shorter vlogs but I would like to understand more about that in this video so I can do them for next year. Now I'm going to start by planning my month of January. So if you watched my new bullet journal setup, you know that I'm not going to post a full video about my January pages. I really need a break from themes and brainstorming. I'm kind of in a burnout zone. So um, yeah, even if I came out with a theme for January, it wouldn't be great. My December theme wasn't that great. So that was the sign that I really needed to stop and take a break from creating and just go back to the basics. So I decided to include the January plan with me in the studio vlog. So I have been struggling a lot with my bullet journal when it comes to spreads and filling in my bullet journal every day. I'm pretty bad at doing that and I normally just I just open my bullet journal like twice a week, which is not great. I struggle a lot with that and with doing my habits. Really want to stop, plan with you my theme for January and see what type of pages I want to create. So I have a couple of goals for January that I want to try. Goals meaning that things that I really want to try to do in order to be better in my life and in a way that my bullet journal can help, if that makes sense. So one thing that I really should try is a five minute journaling session every day. I always use timers for things that can take a long time to do. So I use a timer to just keep track of how much time I'm spending on something, but I never do that for bullet journaling. And I also wanted to have a five minute bullet journaling session every day to just fill in my bullet journal and do the five minute journaling. I can't decide if I'm going to use a journal just for my thoughts, like a diary. There's people that do that, but I started a diary this year, kind of, to just journal about my stuff. And then I use the pages for swatches of washi tapes. So I guess it's not my diary anymore. Let me know in the comments if you have a diary or like if you write somewhere, if you have it in your bullet journal or if you write in a different notebook. I'm going to do a workout tracker with a mood tracker. I think that can help me. I don't know if I should also have a self-care tracker because I have been trying to relax more often, but I'm also not sure how to relax. Like, I feel like I relax, but then when I relax, it's normally something related to work. I think I can have a self-care tracker on the side. The theme for January is going to be secondary. It should be secondary every month, but sometimes I just think about the theme first and then the pages, and it shouldn't be like that. So to summarize, what I need is to make sure that I make time for journaling and updating my bullet journal daily, that I have a structured workout calendar and tracker so I can track what I did and how I felt. So a workout and a mood tracker. And I also want to see if I can do some sort of self-care every day. And for my tracker page, I'm probably just going to do like the grid stuff or individual calendars. And then I'm going to have the weekly spreads. And I also have my weekly spreads on Notion, like I have a master task list where I write everything that I want to do that week and then I do a separate one just for the things that I want to do today. But I really should do that in my bullet journal. I should also have a master to-do list then in my bullet journal. Yeah, I'm going to have a master to-do list. So I have cover page, master to-do list, trackers, workout and mood tracker, and then the weekly spreads. I think that works. And I'm not going to put anything else because that's already too many pages. But yeah, this is what I wrote. I don't know if you can see anything. I'm just not going to film my desk because my, my camera is really stupid and the viewfinder can't really turn. So I film everything upside down, but that's what I wrote. I have everything planned out. Now I just have to think about the actual spreads and the th theme that I'm going to do. And now let's hear a word from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. 
As we spend more and more time on the internet, we are more than ever exposing our information online. And we'd like to think that what we do on safe sites, it's safe, right? If you have concerns about your privacy online, Surfshark can help with that. Surfshark is a VPN service that protects your information by encrypting all the data that you send through the internet. And for safe searches, Surfshark also offers their safe engine where you can search things online without any data tracking or overreaching algorithms. You can use it on as many devices as you want with just one subscription and you can check if your personal data like usernames, passwords and credit card info was leaked anywhere so you can be safe online. You can check out Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deals slash catsplanner and use the promo code catsplanner to get 83% off plus 3 extra months for free. The best part about Surfshark VPN besides protecting you online is that you can watch content that is not available in your country. I live in Portugal and with just a few clicks I can access Netflix in the US and get access to a lot of shows like American Horror Story and animes that are not available on Netflix here like Attack on Titan and Hunter x Hunter. So check out Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deals slash catsplanner, the link is in the description and make sure to use promo code catsplanner to get 83% off plus 3 extra months for free to get premium VPN services and be safe online. And thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Okay, so I just did my pages for January, as you saw, the little sneak peeks of it. And just so you have an idea, normally it takes me a whole afternoon to plan a theme and the pages that I'm going to do and the layouts, another morning or afternoon, like around 3-4 hours to sketch everything and decide where everything is going to be and plan the theme in another notebook and everything getting it ready to film the next day normally and then it takes me around six hours or two whole mornings to film a monthly setup and today i was able to sketch it and decide the layouts and actually do the pages for my monthly setup in one morning so um that says a lot cover page and i liked the mushrooms and these stickers, because I didn't draw this obviously, are from this book that I got from um, Obujo. They sent me this notebook as a little gift and I did a whole haul, a stationary haul and review of their shop that I'm going to link here so you can check it out. The stickers come in these sheets and you just have to cut them out, but I have mixed feelings about them. But I use them anyways because I really like how they looked. So I have the cover page and a quote that says it's never too late to do better, which is just like my mantra for 2021, but I just include it here for January. And I have a master to-do list for the month, simply because, like I mentioned, I kind of do everything in Notion, like master to-do lists digitally, and I always feel like I need a list for the month, but I just never do a spread like that. So I did it this month and it's kind of like a little, um, paper just here and I was going to put a sticker there but I forgot but it looks fine like this so I'm going to leave it and this looks extremely minimal 
it doesn't have anything right here, right here, it just has a border. And I was thinking about adding washi tape to this, but to be honest, I like how it feels, I like how it looks, and I'm not going to do anything else because otherwise I'm not going to like it and I'm not going to use it. Moving on, I have my workout and mood tracker and my other trackers. So here I have the days of the month. Here I'm going to have the column for my workout. So I'm going to write what workouts I did, if I did yoga, if I took a walk, what type of workout I did. And if I didn't do any workouts, I will just probably leave it blank. But I will still add an entry for my mood. So here is the type of workout that I did. And if I did an actual workout, here is the time of the day that I did the workout. So a little sun will be morning and a little moon will be afternoon. And for my mood and notes is, I'm going to actually have here uh, five dots to have like a rate from one to five, how my mood was. And the notes I can explain like if I'm tired, if I need the night shift, if I am sick that day, if that day was great, whatever it is, I'm going to write it here. And I can't forget that I also have the year in pixel spread here. So we're going to have both things going on the whole year, but or at least for January so far. But I'm going to write it in here. And I didn't put a lot of lines on this spread because now it looks pretty empty. But once I start filling it in, it's going to feel... Um, much more saturated and really cluttered. And that's something that I don't like when I do spreads because when I do my spreads for Instagram and they are empty, they look full already. And when I start filling the things in, I don't like it because it's too much for me. And I used to do very minimal themes and starting like with August, September from this year, I started just going full on themes, cluttering a bunch of stuff and I liked the themes, but filling the pages in was just not my style because it was too cluttered. So that's my workout and mood tracker. And here I just have my normal trackers. So I have update bujo and I want to track when I update my bujo if I do it every day. And I actually didn't do it for yesterday because I was extremely tired, but I'm going to do it today. If I do a five minute journaling session, some type of self-care that day. I can write in my weekly spreads what type of self-care I did, but it's not an obligation. So I'm just going to fill it in if I did some sort of self-care, if I did a workout and it's going to be like going on with this one, my water intake. And I forgot to write here the things. So I'm going to do one, two or more than that. Same thing here. Oh, okay. So my water intake, and I put here three different colors to track how many water bottles I drink because I'm pretty bad at tracking that and I really need to drink more water. And sometimes I do, other days I completely forget about it. So I have here a really light gray for one water bottle, a more cooler gray for two and a darker one for more than that. And the same thing for hours that I study that day. In January, I plan to study every single day, at least two hours, but some days are more chaotic than others. So I'm going to have also four different colors for one hour, two hours, three hours or more than that. And I'm going to track here. Of course, that if I didn't study that day, I'm going to leave it blank. But these are just my trackers and I really like how they look. And this theme is actually inspired by the artwork from my pen pal and friend Mahela. She has a beautiful Instagram, a bunch of flowers, a lot of plants, and I really like her style. So I didn't do these, but it's kind of inspired by her. And moving on to my weekly spread, extremely blank, <laughs> but I just have the seven days of the week. And I'm starting this on the third because I don't know if I'm going to do the other week in my current bullet journal for 2021 or if I'm just not going to do the weekly spreads at all. I don't know, I have to think, but I'm starting this on the 3rd of January and I really like the mini mushrooms as well as this thing right here. And I don't think on camera you can tell that it's a sticker. It looks like a rectangle with an art drawn here. So it looks really great, I really like it. But yeah, this is my theme for January, I guess. I really enjoy everything that I did and I'm really excited to start using it. 
I hope to do more minimal themes in 2022 because I really like how they look just like this and I'm, I want to try to embrace that more often in my themes instead of just doing a theme just because I know people like doodles and illustrations and heavy themes but minimalistic is my style black and white is my style so I'm really excited to dive in into this type of theme in 2022 so let me know what you think about my January theme of course and I really hope that this theme can help me um, with my productivity and with relaxing and feeling more at ease in my bullet journal so yeah I'm really excited to start using this theme Thank you. 
Hey guys, so in this vlog I wanted to include here a small business unboxing because I got three sticker packages in the mail this week so I thought it would be the perfect timing to show them for the vlog. So I bought from Sticky Rice Co. This is actually my first time buying from them. I'm actually happy with the quality of the stickers. I got another package from Pals Art Nook. This is actually my second gifted package of stickers because we first collaborated for a video and now she wanted to send me another package of stickers because apparently she had a bunch of sales due to me showing their shop and their stickers in my pen poly me videos so she wanted to send me another package of stickers and I of course said yes because I love her stickers so much and I also got my red package from Pocket Bun Shop and I'm really excited uh, for you to see everything that I got on the red package because I love their stickers I use their stickers in pretty much every single pen poly me video that I do but I was extremely excited because they accepted me as a rep last minute and yeah, I got my package today. I think I'm going to be a rep until January if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, let's just see everything that I got. Okay, so now we are going to start with Sticky Rice Co. And I only got a few sticker sheets. And let me tell you that this was around $25 and I still had a, a discount. And it feels a bit expensive to me for the amount of things that I got. So it might be expensive for me, but for you it's okay. So it comes with the little panda freebie. I got the September freebie stickers for Halloween, which of course weren't going to arrive um, in time for Halloween, but I still like them and I can include them in a pen palette now or use them next year. I got this breakfast thing, I think has a bunch of banana, orange juice, bacon. The stickers look really well made. I like the quality. It's not sparkly, it's like normal paper, so I really like them. But I don't know, the sticker sheet is kind of small. I thought they were bigger. If you know my channel, you know that I don't measure the sticker sheets. I don't look at the dimensions when I buy them, so uh, it's always my fault, but I thought they were going to be a little bigger. I got this strawberry cow um, stickers and they are actually really really cute. I like the strawberries, the cow, the colors, I like everything but again it's about three dollars which I mean I don't know with small business it's really hard to review them but I like the stickers and you have a lot per sheet so I think it's worth it but it feels expensive when you see that all of this was just almost 25 bucks. I got this one with a bunch of boba drinks, really cute, and I mostly use them for my pen pal letters, of course, but I really like them. I got one from the ocean. I don't know the exact sheet names, so um, I'm going to link their shop down below so you can check them out, but they are really cute. I like these for an ocean theme or something like that, really interesting. I got these frog peach bear stickers. I don't even know what this thing is. I think it's a little bit and it's a frog but I really like them. They're really cute and I bought them mainly for the color combinations that each sticker sheet has. This one is a little lemonade stand and orange juice stand with little frog with a lemon on their head. It's really cute but I don't know. I am thinking I'm trying to buy stickers where I can use for themes or like color combos and not really just the ones that you can use in every single pen pal letter so yeah I don't know if that makes sense but I'm trying to buy more of these that you need to actually use them in a theme it's just not a deco sticker I think that's what I'm trying to say so yeah I like these and this sticker sheet is the only one that it's more like a vinyl 
I think these are waterproof. They are not shiny, but they are they are not paper like the other ones, but I really like this one as well. And it comes with a little thank you card art print thing. And this is also a sticker. So I really like the things from them, but they definitely feel a bit expensive for me. So yeah, I bought these to try them out. Um, I hope I can make them last a year or two, but yeah, I like their stickers and of course that if they have stickers that I can use for a long time I will buy them, but I tried to not buy Lego stickers because they also have those and I tried to buy more of these and I'm really happy with my purchase. Next up we have Pals Art Nook and let me tell you that their packaging was upgraded since the last time because last time I didn't have a little card um, that it's kind of looks like an art print and it's really pretty. I really love the minimal flowers and everything I really like this even though it's just a card. It's really pretty and each set of stickers comes inside a little um, Paper pocket thing so really nice and they also have these little stickers that say thank you My phone is not focusing today. I'm so sorry, but they have these little stickers that say thank you to close the sticker packs so it's really exciting it's really pretty so I'm going to start with the waterproof stickers and I bought these as big stickers to include on the envelopes for my pen pals because they look really good and one thing that I like about Pals Art Nook stickers is that everything is watercolored and I believe that she paints everything by hand and then makes stickers digitally but you can kind of tell that they are painted by hand and it's not like a procreate brush at least that's the feeling that I have I don't do digital art so I might be wrong but I don't think so and yeah the stickers the vinyl stickers they actually come in a little card which feels like it's a pin but it's actually a sticker and they are waterproof and they are really thick so I got a frog, I got this little sea turtle, which is really cute for some pink with greens and jade tones for a pen palette, and I got this mystical moth sticker, which is huge, is really pretty, and for an orange-black theme, it's really nice. So. Yeah, I really like these stickers. I chose two. This was gifted to me, by the way. I didn't buy anything. She just wanted to send me more stickers, so I chose a few. And now we are going to move on to the sticker sheets. So I got this Magical Mods one. It's really pretty, and the colors are extremely vibrant, and I hope you can see that on video, that the colors are vibrant, and everything is just so pretty. I really like her stickers. I got the Vivid House Plants for a plant theme, which I haven't done in a while. I don't know why, but I might do one soon or for 2022 for a video, but I really like this one. I got another with frogs because frogs are cute and they are really autumn-y, so I might save them for next autumn, but they are really cute and this one has a little snail on top of it. They are really nice and I like the colors, I like the design of the stickers. I don't have any stickers that look like this except from Pals, so yeah, really nice. I got this stamp collection, Serene Landscapes, and I believe they have another sheet like this, but it's in warm tones and it's a bunch of stamps, really nice. Really nice for putting behind things on a pen pal letter, really cute. I got this special delivery sticker to use on the back of my letters, maybe, <laughs> I don't know, the, st the sticker looks really cute um, just to use on the front of the envelope, so yeah, but I think it's meant to put on the back, so I might use it for that. And then I got this modern abstracts um, sticker sheets in red and orange, but they also have one in blue and green, but they were too cold for me, even though I like cool tones, they were too cold for me and I prefer to do these types of things with warmer colors. So I got a red one and the orange yellow one with browns and they are super super pretty. So that's everything I got from Pals Art Nook. Everything will be in the description so make sure to support them as well. I made several videos with Pals Art Nook stickers so I'm going to leave some of them in the description down below as well. But yeah, I'm really happy with these stickers and I can't wait to use them. 
And last but not least, we have my wrap package from Pocket Bun Shop. So I actually bought stickers thinking about Christmas and I forgot that things from the US take a month or two to arrive. So um, I bought some stickers for Christmas and I already filmed my Christmas pen pals, so I might not use them this year. But nonetheless, I'm going to show you everything that I got. So first of all, I got some washi samples and this washi tape, the one with the cherries, has been on my wish list from their shop for a long time. I really like the washi tape because it's pink, it has white grids and it has cherries on it. But because I have too many washi tapes, I didn't want to buy it because I was afraid that I wasn't going to use it as much. So when the opportunity came to have samples, I got one. I also got this brown boba tea one. They also have it in gold and like green and pink, but I chose the brown one and I got this one with little cats and dogs, I believe. I don't know, but these are super cute and were the ones that I chose. For notepads, I got two of the MS Paint one and these are really cute to include on the envelopes of pen palettes because of the colors and the little dog at the top with the cursor and everything. I really like this aesthetic, so I chose these ones and for the extra ones, I got these, which are music playlist things. So some of them are black with grids, one of them is a more simple one. And then I got the blues, which are also really pretty. This one is blue with white lines, this one is white with blue lines, and this one is just white with a little blue around it. So really, really cute. I plan to use it on the envelopes. And for the stickers, these were the ones that I got. I got this one which is like Christmas present ribbons for Christmas and I <laughs> am not going to use it but um, anyways I really like these. I may use it for a birthday pen palette sometime next year, I don't know, but these are cute. I also got this one with snowflakes, I really love snowflakes so this is really pretty. I did a pen palette with me video with a blue theme for December but yeah, I didn't include these because I didn't get them on time. I got this sticker sheet with Tamagoshis, which is really cute. I really like these. And this one with little... I want to say bears, but I don't know if these are Shivas, but these are cute. So I got these. And I finally got the ones with little loaves and breads and pies and whatever. These are really cute. So I got this one as well for more vintage orange letters. And finally, they sent me an art print, which is really nice because it has the bears or dogs. I never know with any, what animal it is, but I think it's a dog. And the only thing that I didn't ask for, but that they include in every order, I believe, it's an art print. And this one is super, super cute. So that's everything that I got from them. And for all of the other shops, everything is in the description linked down below. So yeah. And for Pocket Bud Shop, you can use my rep code CATSPLANNER10 for 10% off at checkout. So I think I'm going to end the vlog here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys!